Hey friends and resellers, it's Trish with Well Sourced coming at you with part two of a recent Goodwill Outlet bins haul. So this day that I went to the bins in Nashville, Tennessee, I picked up 110 pounds of items at $1.49 a pound. And this will include all the remaining clothing items that I had, as well as some shoes and accessories. So I picked up more shoes this day than normal because the bins started opening now at eight o'clock instead of nine o'clock and it was just a week old. So I don't think everyone knew that because usually the shoe bin is like the first thing that is like cleared out when I go into the bins. So I did pick up maybe a few more shoes than normal and they had a couple accessory bins that came out this day. So I was happy to find a few accessories as well. All right, this first piece I grabbed, um, although this brand doesn't do super well for me, this is Theory and I'm not sure how old that tag is, but it is a brown lightweight jacket with kind of like a field jacket, utility jacket style to it. It has this button belted style um, accent going on here at the waist. It's very lightweight and I think it is a linen blend. It is a linen blend linen blend, 62% linen. So this is a great lightweight piece that I thought I would grab that would be a good style. Um, even if the brand is not the best seller for me, I was happy to grab that. All right, this is the brand Lauren, Ralph Lauren, and this is a 100% lambswool sweater made in Hong Kong, which leads me to believe that it is a vintage piece, at least pre like mid nineties and before. Um, I, this is maybe a, this is a women's sweater, I guess, based on the cut. It's this fun mock neck lambswool sweater. It's a size XL. Did I say that? And it has this fun striping down the um, front. And then the side does have a split. So this is, looks like a women's sweater to me. It was in very nice condition. There were a few little pills, but for the age that I believe it is, it's in pretty darn good condition. And I do all right selling Lauren Ralph Lauren pieces. All right, Th I like selling J. Crew. Some stuff might take a hot minute to sell, but sometimes you just touch something or see something, you think, oh, that should probably get in my cart. Um, so this is J. Crew Factory, and it ha it's a size small. This is a minky faux fur vest, zip up vest, very, very soft and it's in this blue color like a i don't know how to describe the blue it's like a royal blue but it's also let's see if you can see it. it's just very soft so it kind of has an iridescence to it anyway this is a very cute vest maybe not season appropriate but um i couldn't help myself all right Next up is another brand that I don't do super well with, but that retails a lot, like the Theory Top. This is Vince, and this is a size eight little jacket, little blazer, lightweight navy blazer, has two buttons on the front, light shoulder padding, and it's a great navy blue piece. It is lined, and it's 40, I'm sorry, 56% linen. So I did want to go ahead and grab that. A linen blazer this time of year seems like a good choice. Okay, next up is this is just Melrose Silk Studio. No clue about this brand. It's a size small 100% silk Hawaiian top in this kind of periwinkle lavender blue color. And I just thought it was a fun top for the upcoming season. Just a lightweight top for summer. This is H&M, a size two, which is pretty uh, small on the sizes that I don't necessarily always pick up, but this is a very substantial piece. It's in this army OD green um, color. It's a mini skirt and it kind of has like a military look to it, all like, or prep school or um, some sort of uniform look to it with this grommet detail or not grommet, but studded detail sort of here. It does have a, po a snap pocket here on the front and it zips up in the back, but it's just a real substantial feeling fabric. Um, what are you? Oh, 
Okay, I've read every tag that not in English so far. I should have started at the beginning. Here, oh, polyester viscose blend. So it kind of feels like cotton, but this has maybe like an academia look to it. Also kind of military. I don't know. I'll use some random words for it and see what happens. All right. This is um, Express, the brand Express. It's a size small. It's the Portofino shirt. And as far as these dress shirts from Express, this is the one that I have picked up and done well with. I tend to sell it. People, I think, like it for work. It's not buttoned up, sorry. This is a black with white polka dot tab sleeve shirt and the Portofino shirt, which is a style that people like. So um, I did go ahead and pick that up. Now, this is an older piece by J. Jill, like older piece by J. Jill. It is a size uh, extra large. And it is just a chenille cream mock neck kind of ribbed sweater that gave me kind of like a 90s Y2K look to it as well. It's got a fuzzy on here. Oops. And, you know, it's not a typical piece from J. Jill that necessarily does well, like if it's a linen piece or the Pima cotton. It's just a poly nylon blend. But I liked the style of it, so I went ahead and grabbed it. This is also one of those pieces. This is J. Jill, which is, this looks, this is made in Hong Kong. So this is definitely an older tag from J. Jill. This is a medium petite, but this is a boxy button front kind of top in this. I don't know what this fabric is. It's a fleecy kind of, it's kind of like chenille, I guess. Top in this fun rust color. I This definitely has a lagging look to it that you would kind of maybe wear over uh, you know, another top and the buttons are covered in, um, a fabric. So I, even though it's an older piece, I did want to go ahead and grab that. All right. Next up is Jessica Howard. And I had a dress similar to this for my uh, bridal shower. I wore like a pink one. This is new with tags. It's the day lace in blue. And so mine, the one I had was kind of a magenta pink because um, I'm not super traditional, didn't want to wear white at that, but it had a lace overlay over a tan under um, lay, and then it has, this has half sleeves, and it's just a nice dress. It is a back zip, and it, it was new with tags, so in a great size, I thought I would go ahead and pick that up. The dress, I think Jessica Howard's from Macy's. The dress that I got for my bridal shower nine, seven, how many years have I been married? Seven, seven years ago, you know, it was like a hundred and something dollars. So it's not necessarily a cheap brand. Um, so I think that that will do well. All right. In the last haul, I did say I picked up a few uni glow pieces. This is a size medium and this is a turtleneck sweater dress in this cream color. It's a longer length. Um, and it has some slits down the side, but it is a long length that it is a sweater dress. It's a great cream color and it had a few little pills that I can take care of, but it felt like actually a pretty nice quality. Some of my Uniglo stuff does feel pretty nice. So this is 70% wool and 30% nylon. This is a Land's End piece. It's a 16W. And it is a cap sleeve, kind of maroon colored, pleat neckline there, dress. Um, oh, I was gonna say somewhere in here is the belt. This is a below the knee length. It has um, a belt loop here. It does have pockets and it does have the coordinating belt. It does have an exposed back zipper and it is lined. And I feel like this was maybe 100% cotton. Oh, no, I lied. Linen, viscose, uh, with spandex. It is definitely, that's not in English, and I'm not sure what the English tag is, but that's what it says. And so, you know, just a really nice staple piece. I feel like Land's End makes nice quality clothing, and um, I do well selling Land's End in sizes that are like above, a large and above. All right, this, sometimes you just grab stuff. Uh, this is Gilly, no, Jilly maybe. Got it, love it, little acronym. 
it's a size XL. This is just um, a V-neck tank dress, but it's a maxi length and it has just this really large, I guess that's a floral print. It kind of looks like a feather, but floral, sort of kaleidoscope looking print to it. And um, it's made out of something. It's made out of something crazy. Polyester rayon, which is weird because it does feel like hot. And I remember thinking I was surprised when I got home. Um, I, and of course, I will be putting stuff up along the way on the screen about how much I think I'll be getting for these items comp wise. And maybe information about where that brand is sold. I can't remember if it was like a QVC brand or like just a boutique. But okay, um, I'm a sucker for kind of anything new with tags at the bins, even if it is a Target brand. So this is Wild Fable. It's an extra small. This is, and I love gray. Um, this is retail for $30 and it is just a fleece pullover. It's up almost a half zip uh, mock neck fleece. And I just think that that's a piece that somebody will like. Maybe I get 15 bucks for that, but I don't have a problem with that, especially a new tag piece from Target. Um, I'm not opposed to picking that up. The only thing I've even picked up new with tags, Walmart, um, new with tags is new with tags. So it retailed for something and at the cost of goods that I'm paying at $1.49 a pound, I'm, this does not even weigh a pound. And so even if I only make a $15 sale on that, I'm happy with that return, especially because it's easy to photograph, not a lot of steaming involved or ironing or whatnot. This is another wild fable piece in a size large, and it's this floral um, burnout velour crop top that is like ties and knots in the front. I will probably have to find a stock photo to see how they tied it exactly. I don't know if it's supposed to wrap around I thought maybe it wraps around um, the front and then ties in the back, which I am not going to be able to do. So if I find a stock photo by the time I put this video up, I will um, make sure to share that with you. But I just thought that was a fun top for someone. This day I found a bunch of Torrid pieces. So this is Torrid size three, which in their sizing is a three X. And this is a button front, kind of baby doll top in a almost a window pane plaid black and white has a little bell sleeve these are like a three-quarter length sleeve and then it does have some elastic in the back to give it a little bit of shape and dimension the thing I love about Torrid is on their size tags or on their interior fabric tag it will have when the piece came out so this is new this is from last summer of 2022 and then it has the style number on here so that I can easily find that not necessarily a stock photo. I do use some stock photos. I'm trying to use them not as my primary photo, but it will also just give me the name of the piece and any other attributes about it that will be nice to be able to put into the listing. Here's another toward piece, size two. This is from 2020. And this is a pair of pull on pants with a tie waist they do have pockets goes down into a wide leg which I would say this is a crop length it's blue and it has this white little um, print down the whole leg vertical stripe it's just they're real cute lightweight pant and they are lined a short liner so they do have a little bit of extra um, lining through down to about here so that it's not a see-through. So that was a fun find. This is Angel of the North. Um, I feel like I found another Angel in the North piece this day and I did not bring it home obviously, but I said that in my last video, like sometimes I think things disappear out of my cart, not that someone's taking it, but like either I, it falls out or I decide not to get it, but I don't remember that part of the story. Um, this is a size small. This is an anthropology brand I have never picked up. I saw the tag and I thought that sounds familiar. So I looked to see if it had the RN number for anthropology and it did. And 
This is a cotton acrylic polyester alpaca blend. It only has 6% alpaca, but that's still a nice fiber. And it does have one little food spot on the armpit right there that I'll be able to get out with no big deal. This is a purpley pink kind of lavender color, open cardigan with a mixed knit to it. It's got this kind of knit on the back and it's a very cute open cardigan. I feel like the comps on that were pretty good. So that was exciting. This is J. Crew Factory. It's a size large though. So I did pick them up and it's a relatively new piece, I think. From fall of 2021. It's just a pair of um, three quarter length or seven eighths leggings in this cheetah print or leopard print with the green behind it. I just thought they were in really nice condition and that somebody could appreciate those. This was a funny find. I grabbed it and I thought, gosh, this is a weird top. I bet this maybe is something important, but it more not. Um, so it has this enormous funnel neck. I'll just show it to you. This is the neck. So here's the top of the neck and here is where your body is. So it's a very long top um, of the neck. So it's a real kind of scrunchy mock neck, turtleneck kind of thing. And somewhere down in here, is the brand. Okay. Gretchen Scott. I don't know why that sparked something into my mind. Like, well, that might be something. So I went ahead and grabbed it. It's the tag says laugh more, gripe less, ignore critics, say yes, order dessert, love life. 100% cotton and made in India. So those things made me feel like this was a piece to pick up. And I like the tag. Uh, so this is just a know what the print is exactly that I would call it. It's not really a paisley. It's almost like a floor de lis but it's got three quarter length um, sleeves and it's just kind of a tunic top. Super lightweight, mixed media or mixed print at the bottom there with this huge enormous drapey neckline which this will look good on my body form. It does not look good the way I'm holding it for you today. So anyway I can't remember what the comps were on that but I thought it was an interesting piece and it kind of fits in that lag and look aesthetic as well as just kind of breezy summer. Um, and so I did go ahead and grab that. Okay, this is a fun pickup. This is Eddie Dessine or Dessin, Los Angeles. This is a vintage sweater made in Korea. It's 91% acrylic, nylon, rayon, and then it has 3% Angora. But it's just this vintage sweater and it was a great purple color. It has light shoulder padding. And then it has this fun, like total 80s uh, look to the front of it. It has some, you can see the rabbit hair fibers there. And then it has some little blingy, crystal-y kind of things there. And the back is just plain. And this was in a remarkable condition. Like there's just a little bit of killing. But, uh, you know, sometimes things in the from the 70s and 80s, even the 90s were not made of all those natural fibers. They're made to last through fire, plague, famine, whatever. Okay, this is the brand Billabong, which I have picked up in the past. I got this, it's a size large, but it's a, just a really cute jacket. It's a hooded, let's see if I can show it here, double breasted jacket in this great like Kelly green color. And then the hood has a contrasting plaid kind of satin liner and it is made out of cotton poly and then a poly blend, but it's just a really nice jacket. It has this fun cuff detail and these kind of, they're like a wooden button, I guess, and has pockets on the sides. And then it does have a little bit of like a belted action going on there so that it is something that kind of gathers in and makes it a little more flattering. Okay. So this is the last bag of clothing and then we're gonna move on to the uh, accessories and shoes that I picked up. All right, this is H&M. You can't really see it's black on black. This is a size small. This is a men's shirt and it's wrinkly and it's not buttoned up, so fail for me. But this is a really fun floral print 
black top. It's a it's a lighter weight top and it is a 100% cotton is what it feels like. Oh no, Lyocell cotton blend. So it's a nice fabric and um, I thought it was a nice piece for somebody to wear. I thought it was just going to be, you know, I can just see somebody wearing that that has that a good style to them. This is 100% for me. This is Old Navy, size extra large. It's the cami dress, I guess. So it's just got some spaghetti straps and just a little bit of a V. It goes into a, uh, I'm gonna call this a midi almost maxi length. On me, it's more of a midi because I'm pretty tall. And it's got some tiered accents here. It does have pockets. This is something I got to wear over a, another tank or a bathing suit um, because these are way too narrow to wear with a bra. <laughs> If you know, you know. This is also for me, Old Navy. I love Old Navy stuff. I don't like paying retail for it necessarily, but it's a size extra large. And it's just a cute, it's off shoulder and a black short sleeve top with some heavy embroidery around the neckline and that smocking there. And uh, my doorbell keeps detecting a visitor, but it's actually just because it's windy out and my ferns on my front porch are blowing in the breeze. Anyway, my husband and I have an upcoming vacation um, this in the next month or so, and I just was trying to pick up some new things to me to wear to vacation that would be nice and lightweight. What are you? The, oh, this is Uniqlo again, and this is a, a men's shirt in a size extra large. It's just a black button down or button front shirt by Uniglo and you know it's not something that retails for a ton but it's a cotton modal blend and those that's a nice summer fabric to have <clears throat> all right this is j crew factory it's a size 30 and it is a pair of button fly denim shorts in a black they're cut off and they have been intentionally cut off and frayed at the bottom. These are the reimagined um, by J. Crew, and so that's like their um, oh, like orga not organic, but like eco-friendly line, I believe. Reimagined by J. Crew, inspired by the planet and its people. That's what I think it was. I looked up last time, and maybe some of it is made by like dead dead stock fabrics or recycled fabrics. I can't remember the whole whole spiel on that. Um, these are from summer of 21. So they're relatively new. They're just a high-waisted short short and a great size. So I thought that was fun for the upcoming season. This I picked up. I didn't look at it closely enough. I just saw the size and I thought, oh, that seems cute. I might want that. This is Champion, which I, I do pick up Champion items. Um, I did find a reverse weave top this day, but it was trash. And I thought, oh, bummer. But I grabbed this and it says it's an extra large but it must be a youth extra large because i um would not squeeze into this on my best day but it has the embroidered champion in this kind of bronzy <clears throat> brown color and it's a dip dye down into the front it does have the it's embroidered so it has a little bit nicer details than some of the champion pieces so i'll still list it as long as there's nothing totally flawed with it this I also picked up for myself. Um, this is the Brancato, which I've never heard of. It's down in the South, um, all over here. We have Cato. It's like a women's clothing line. And usually in like kind of strip malls around here is where I've noticed, but this is a very cute um, chambray dress with this fun embroidery the neckline. And then it has some little smocking here at the side and a tie waist. I have not tried this on. I Hopefully it fits, but sometimes things in the bus just do not fit. And this was 100% tensile, so a nice fabric. Um, and I thought that would be cute for upcoming vacation as well. Okay, this is the brand Pearl Azumi, which is a cycling brand. This is a men's size extra large cycling short. So this is um, the shorts has pockets and then it has it was hard enough to find get this to work but it has an attached liner 
that you pull out and this is the padded um, brief that is in here for the seat because cycling is not fun unless your butt gets used to it and this I feel like might be a newer piece or it hasn't been worn a ton oh this is that's a lie this is from 2012 so it's uh, definitely an older piece it does have the style number on here but it's in very good condition so it has an adjustable waistband they're just overall nice condition I can flip that I don't have a problem selling Pearl Izumi stuff that's older because honestly um, it's the same stuff from I mean it's not like the styles change it's a padded bike short still applicable <laughs> to today's world okay this is pink Victoria's Secret Ultimate size medium and I just grabbed it I really thought it was a cute bra it's a white front with the spell out and it has a black band with the spell out then it crosses over in the back and it has some cage kind of detail on the side so went ahead and grabbed that and that looks like it for the clothing item so that doesn't mean that we won't come across one randomly in another bin so this will probably be a hodgepodge of shoes. Oh, all right. This is uh, the brand Bagalini. This is a great, great brand. Um, they make nylon bags that are easy, easy cleanup. This one is in really good condition. It did not need to be cleaned. It adjusts to a crossover style bag. And they, they're just made like great travel bags. And my mom just took one with us when we were in um, Ireland. She had one and I took one to, with me to Ireland last time maybe. And to Italy, I had a cross bag. So, you know, they're just very practical. They have great pockets, magnetic um, closure on the outside and a zipper one on the top. Some of them come with like RFID blocking and other anti-theft devices. Um, like the, maybe the strap that has metal in it so it can't be cut. You would not believe how much you're afraid of pickpocketing. And when we went to Italy, that's like all anyone ever talked about. <laughs> so um, I just feel like if you're very careful with your bags and don't leave them laying around, you're probably all right. But it has a great fun blue interior and this brown liner or outside. This, oh, you know, you find these at TJ Maxx, but they're also sold in department stores. And you know, I will be able to easily list that. I've sold most everything bag leaning I've ever picked up. All right, this is fun. This is the brand Capelli. They make, I can't remember where I've seen Capelli stuff sold, but this is just a, a, a tote, or I mean a shoulder bag. And it has this fun squirrel applique on the front of it with some leaves and some acorns. Um, it's kind of three-dimensional. I don't know if you can see how this little tail comes out on this sort of denim um, bag and a faux leather strap. This is kind of screaming like grandma core to me and or just somebody who likes squirrels or for fall. Kind of fits into multiple different aesthetics. And I was just trying to see if it had anything on here about whether those were faux, faux leather. They feel like faux leather. Anyway, it just, it has a real clean inside and just a really cute, cute tote bag. All right. This is a funny thing because I picked this hat up, put it in my cart, and then I was like, hmm, that looks like the same hat when I was at the shoe bin. It had fallen out of my cart apparently and ended up in the shoe bin because I know that I picked it up. But it's Gap and it's a wool poly blend. It's a medium large and it is from... Did it have the date on here? I feel like it did, but I guess it doesn't. But it's made in Taiwan. I mean, it is definitely a vintage hat, a vintage tag. But this kind of screams like blossom to me. I don't know if a medium large will fit my head. Whoa, barely. This is definitely um, like a 90s Y2K hat. And it's a wool blend. So, you know, I went ahead and grabbed that. All right. This is another hat I grabbed. This is um, Nike, the ACG. Well, <laughs> see if I can get you to see it. There we go. Nike ACG. This is a brown kind of cadet hat in this fleece color. Whew, it's a little tight on my giant head, but um, just a real cute hat for cold weather. Okay. This was probably one of the better pickups of the day. Um, this is Kate Spade and it's a 
tote bag, a plaid tote bag. I can't remember what it's called, what the name of the bag is called. Um, but it's a plaid and black, a pink and black tote bag. And this is just a coated um, vinyl. Has a pretty good clean inside. And I've seen if it said anything on here. Pretty clean inside. There's a few little pen marks. Has a zipper pocket on the inside that someone carried makeup in that has a few more marks. And on this side, you'll see it has this pink transfer of some sort. And on the bottom, every single one of these that was used that I saw online had that same exact transfer. So it must have been a huge issue with whatever this bag is. Um, despite that, the main front side that you see, there's one little wrinkle in the fabric and a little bit of tra color transfer. I did try to get this, um, like use a magic eraser and some other stain removers on the bottom piece and it didn't affect that at all. So these still were reselling even flawed for a pretty decent return. So I didn't have a problem with that and it's just a cute bag. All right, this is another hat, not going to fit my head. <laughs> And it just says lake life on it. Um, I grew up on a lake and will retire onto a lake or at least within vicinity of the lake. And that is applicable to my life. But these are just a fun little hats. Um, they Some say like lake hair don't care or lake life. And so I did go ahead and grab that. All right. This is the brand Halogen, which is I think a Nordstrom house brand. Um, it's 100% cashmere. It has a hole in it. There it is. It's a beautiful scarf. Super soft. Um, if I were keeping this for myself, I wouldn't mind that it had a hole in it. I would just whip them stitch shut and use it. I mean, this is extremely soft. However, um, I'm just going to stick this in my cashmere lot box. This is a great piece for someone who's doing, you know, crafting. And I've said it before in previous bins hauls that I just have been grabbing cashmere pieces that are um, flawed and and i may start doing it with wool as well just for crafting lots i don't care if i have to sit on it for you know six months i don't mind storing it it's just one of those things that i feel better about knowing that it went off to a different home to be repurposed into something else okay this is jeffrey bean or joffrey bean 100 percent cashmere men's sweater or not men's sweater men's um scarf and made in inner mongolia that's interesting it's just a pinstripe gray and white scarf um, I did not see any flaws on this one, but I knew if I did, I could throw it in my lot box. I sold a jo uh, Jeffrey Bean scarf this last year and it did all right. It sold pretty well. This I bought for style. The brand, I think it didn't have a brand at all or did it? Oh yeah. The brand is Lina, L-I-N-A. Never heard of it. It has a pretty clean interior. It's just a crochet bag. So it has, you know, that boho aesthetic. It kind of looks like the sack. Um, this does go over your shoulder. So that's nice. It's not too short. And it has a magnetic button closure at the top. And these are nice little beachy kind of boho colors. Okay, this, I can't leave this stuff behind. I just, I just can't do it. Um, so this is a Target brand and it's just a Target, one of their bags that they put out. I had another one I got that I listed a while ago too, but this is an extremely cute tote bag. It's just a woven tote bag with this faux leather and kind of rope trim detail and a striped interior. You know, this may have sold for a Target for $20 to $30, um, but I don't see why it should go off to a landfill just because it didn't work for someone anymore. It's just really cute. and. I will, you know, get that listed. Some of these things like this, I will sometimes only list on Poshmark first to see if they sell just because the shipping is easier on Poshmark because it's flat rate, up to five pounds. Um, although this one doesn't weigh a ton and I can easily ship it on eBay and Mercari, but I do like to, if something's really big and bulky, I try to list it on um, Poshmark first. Well, I do that anyway. All right, this is the brand Margot. It says Margot New York Genuine Leather. I grabbed a Margot bag at maybe a retail um, Goodwill and it sold very quickly. But it has hardware here. This is a buttery, buttery, buttery soft um, bag. Actually, this fits, oh, this could maybe go to a crossbody. 
um, it's kind of a little bit of a sack hobo style and it has a turnkey lock um, closure on the front pocket and then a zipper top. This is flawed on the bottom of this bag. It has some water damage. I'm going to see what I kind of it's an interesting shape. See what I can do about that. But honestly, the rest of the bag is in very good condition. So why should that matter that it sat in some water somewhere? Um, but honestly, now that I'm looking at and there's one little pen mark, it looks like talking about this bag it's so soft oh it's it's very very soft so i did go ahead and grab that this has dirt on it from my car apparently fell out something i knew something fell out when i was getting ready to leave all right this is um first edition don't know what that means it is real leather and it is a little kind of shoulder bag but it could be used as a clutch. It does have little removable strap. Um, and it has this lock that's very kind of interesting, goes over and snaps. The inside was very clean. And this top part is leather wrapped. It's not just metal, very clean on the inside. And um, it did have just a little dirt. Something did fall out of my car. I just can't remember what it was. So I'm just gonna polish that up. And I grabbed this for myself. I do have an upcoming event with my husband this spring um or almost summer I guess spring to a formal event and my last couple bags I took didn't fit my phone and so I had to hold on to that and uh, my cocktail and other things it was getting pretty convoluted so I thought I would get that bigger bag to see if that would work maybe for my outfit okay this is new with tags that's why I bought it it's just a polyester scarf from Maurice's it retailed for $24.99 but it's this really pretty purpley pink kind of um, mauve colored striped color blocked scarf. It's super soft. It's new with tags. So of course I'm going to be picking that up. All right. This is a leather, um, kind of, I would call it like a daily driver golf hat sort of thing. And it is one size fits most. It does not have a brand on it, but um, I, you know who this reminds me of is if you watch uh, Miss, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, um, Susie, her manager, always is wearing kind of these little hats. And I just love her. She's probably my favorite character on the whole show. So anyway, I did just grab this because I love picking up hats at the bins. This was probably a mistake. I grabbed it. It said fossil. It was new with tags. And then I got it home and I didn't notice how dingy it was um, from being at the bins or in someone's, I don't know. It's, it doesn't look like it's ever been used. I mean, it's older, obviously it has a checkbook holder in it. So that makes it probably vintage. Um, it's leather and, but it just kind of looks like it was sat in someone's drawer forever. So I, it retailed for $38. I am going to see if I can kind of clean it up, but if not, it wasn't the worst pickup of my life. All right, I grabbed this. This is Bio World. I didn't really care about it, but it has um, Mario on the front of it embroidered in kind of the cross stitch pattern that he would have been in in um, Nintendo games. This is Super Mario Brothers. This is not old. It's one size fits most, but I thought I would grab it. There's Super Mario Brother fans out there. I love little hankies um this says 100 cotton made in china i don't necessarily remember where the brand was there it is um this is joe dorle not joie joe or leo is that a j joie no joe dorle i don't know i took french for two years in high school and don't remember any of it except the dirty warts but um just a really cute hanky and these look like they did okay on the secondhand market. I do have kind of a collection of hankies going, but I will probably go ahead and list that one. All right, now on to the shoes. I think we're done with the accessories. So this is a fun pickup. I saw these right away and I thought, oh, those look like Fly London's. Um, so they are, they're a size 40 and it is a wedge heel. It has this tan and black patent leather, um, toe a black patent ankle strap and then this red patent 
detail along the um, outsole. Now, this one is in like amazing shape. This one has two little dings to the red patent leather. I don't think that that has any effect on the shoe. Otherwise, they were in really good condition with very light signs of wear and I was happy to grab these and the comps look pretty good on these. Okay, next up, I got these. These are just really cute. It's Zara. They're super small size. They're like a 35. So that's almost like a kid's size shoe. Um, it's probably like a five, a four and a half, five. So these may be considered kid shoes, but they are really cute. They're like a ballet flat velour, um, has a little hook and loop closure across the strap across here. And they, I'm sorry, it's my nose. Um, and they're in this real pale pink color, almost lavender. So very nice condition. And I am not opposed to picking up Zara shoes. Okay, this is a pair of Tevas, um, and we've talked about before how it's really Teva, but no one calls it that. They are cross-strapped flip-flop thong. There is a little bit of wear to the toe bed on the, or the sole area on the front of the shoe. They're a size nine um, women's flip-flop. I will clean up the toe bed on these. They've got a little bit of toe marks, but overall in pretty good condition, and they weigh nothing. These I'm not 100% sure if I picked up for myself or not. They do have some wear to them, but with Birkenstock, sometimes that doesn't matter. So these are like the, I think the Boston Clog, maybe. They're brown suede, uh, slip-on clog. I have a full clog that has a heel on it from Birkenstock as well. They check out with all the names in the right spot. They do have um, a lot of wear to the sole. The only thing that didn't check out on here was that the fact that it doesn't say Burke on the floor or on the bottoms. It does say Birkenstock on the hardware on the inside. It says made in Germany everywhere else. So they check out and I just don't know if it's had so much wear to the bottoms that that's actually worn off of there or not. So um, I'll have to do a little bit of research just to see, but they, they seem to check out pretty well. There's definitely some wear on the front. I was just going to take my suede brush to it to see if I could get that to look any better. This does have the comfort floor bed, floor bed, sole to it. Um, it's a little bit gushy. So they say made in Germany. They're a size 40. And otherwise it's worn off. So it leads me to believe that these are just well worn and maybe that's why it doesn't say Burke on the bottom, but you'd have to wear that down pretty well for that to go away. So I'm just gonna have to do a little bit more research to ensure that these are authentic. Um, and they look like they might be considered a narrow. It looks like that that sh foot, the little foot in there, if it's colored in, that means it's a narrow but um, I don't know. Anyway, I was contemplating keeping these for myself, so we'll have to do a little more research and see what comes about from that. All right, this is just a laser cut belt. It doesn't have a brand or a size. I'll just measure it. Um, it has some nice hardware. It feels like faux leather to me, and it has some silver hardware on it, silver tone, and then it has these little of details along the way but just you know a belt for somebody it's got some boho western look to it all right this is the brand lucky brand these are the barimo b-a-r-i-m-o they're an eight and a half they're leather they're very they feel very nice um and see if i can get them to buckle so that you can get the whole effect here. Okay, so they're a peep toe. They've got a stacked heel and they have a closed heel on the back, which I like personally. And then it's a very nice brown leather upper. These have a rubber sole, but very light wear to them. Honestly, these are just really cute shoes and a great transitional piece. I don't mind picking up Lucky Brand shoes. I don't expect them to sell for a ton, but I do do, do, do all right selling them. 
All right, these are the Faith, F-A-Y-T-H, oh, the Faith 2. They're a seven and a half. They're also Lucky Brand. They're just a slip-on kind of ankle booty. Very cute. If these were in my size, I would want to keep them. They have, again, very light signs of wear. Um, it used to be they would only put this sticker on the bottom, and so then it would wear off and you wouldn't be able to see what the size was. Super annoying. But I've noticed that a lot of them do have the size on the inside nowadays. So that is great. Okay, next up is a pair of Hunter boots. And these, are, I think, are a seven or a seven and a half. Let's see. They are a US 7. They're in a great Kelly Green color and overall look to be in decent condition. And they will just, I'll just use a little bit of olive oil. I learned that from somebody on YouTube years ago. Just to rub a little olive oil on them, it will polish them up. These are the matte, they're not the glossy, but it still kind of gets any of the gunk off there and makes them look in good condition, um, which they are. They are in good condition. The buckles are in good condition. Sometimes these get cracked. So um, the Hunter has a little bit of wear to it, but overall they're in good condition. This is a pair of Birkenstock. Um, they are a size 38 and they're just a white crossover buckle sandal um, with some rose tone hardware. This is like the faux leather ones, the Burko maybe. And see how they say Burke on the bottom really easily? Those other ones just don't, but there's nothing about those that lead me to believe that they're fake. Although, who knows? Um, it seems like an odd thing to create fake ones of, like Rothy's or Teak's. It's not like they're Louis Vuitton bag that retails for thousands of dollars. So it's just funny. Or fake Lululemon. <laughs> I realize that they have a higher price point, but that just doesn't seem like something that people should fake. Okay, I picked these up. I just thought, I saw these words. Made in Brazil. <laughs> um, so I grabbed them. It's a Roman, the Romano brand. It's a sandal. It is a leather sandal. It has... Um, a hook and loop closure here and this toe strap. They're very cute. They have kind of a scallop trim to them, a brown leather and kind of a crossover stitching there. Very good condition. These are a six and a half women's genuine leather made in Brazil. The comps on these weren't super amazing, but they were good enough for me to grab them. The bummer was this day I found this pair of J. Crew like mules, like a plaid, tartan plaid kind of um, holiday mule and I grabbed them. And then I, they were in my cart and I thought something is amiss here. One of the shoes was a 10 and one was a nine. So somewhere out there, there was a missing or a shoe that was not a matching set. Okay, I grabbed these um, because Bionics do pretty well, especially in certain sizes, although I think the market is um, kind of calmed down on them a little bit. Oh, my leg is falling asleep. Okay, this is the Chrissy. It's a size eight. It is a wedge with this two strap detail that has a hook and loop closure. It's like a faux cork look to it, I guess. And they're in good condition. The soles have very, very light signs of wear. They're a size eight. Did I say that? And they are a faux leather um, upper and I thought that these were just a fun sandal for the upcoming season. Okay, these I grabbed because they said they were made in Spain, which sometimes means good things. They're a size 37 and they are, I have to think of what the name is because I can't really see it on here, Verbenas. I think is what they're called, verbenas. They're an espadrille, suede espadrille, very cute. Very light signs of wear. Um, they, somebody did have a sweaty foot in there. I will wipe it out. It's just leather, it happens. Um, they're, but they're very cute. And the comps were not great on them. I really wish these were in my size because I felt like they were extremely cute. Okay, this is the brand SM New York, which is nothing important. I got them because they look like uh, they're that knit kind of sandal from the 90s Y2K, that Steve Madden lug sole or wet, you know, platform look to them. And I don't have a problem picking up that style. 
The last pair is a pair of shoes for myself. I think they're just universal thread. They look brand spanking new almost. They're a size nine and they're just a slip-on knit espadrille. And honestly, I thought they matched the black top I got earlier pretty well. So I went ahead and grabbed that. That is it. I ended on something for myself, but that is it. That is my haul. The top picks from this part of the haul were definitely the Kate Spade tote bag. And I really love these Fly London shoes, which happened to be, did I say they were a size 40? I, they're my size um, in Fly London's because I feel like a 40 is closer to a nine, but they're in very good condition. I think that that won't deter someone from buying them, that missing little red piece there. So those were maybe my two favorite pickups of the day, but overall I found some great brands to resell online and I just need to get them all listed. So if you have noticed something that you are interested in this video, it should be up within the next week or so. I'm working on the first batch right now. I am so close to having 500 subscribers to my channel. If you are not subscribed and are interested in being a subscriber to my channel, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and subscribing to my channel, even hit that bell to be notified when I post new content, which is every Friday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And I'm just trying to grow my channel to provide some bread and butter information on what I find in my area to other resellers or to new resellers. I am definitely not a professional professional like some of the other bigger resellers online. However, I have been doing this for several years and I do make my living at selling a lot of bread and butter items from what I'm able to find in my area. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.